uh, get started with uh, Palmer and then Mark. Okay. Yeah, Coach, obviously I know the LSU game was pretty early on in SEC play, but how much of that game are y'all watching versus how much more recent stuff? And what would you like to carry over slash change from that game? Well, um, I've definitely watched it. Our coaches have watched it. We'll show bits and pieces, but we're such a different team, and and, um, and I'm sure they are too. So there, there's a place for that, but it's much more about where they're at right now, uh, what we're coming off of from our games last week, um, and then really the, the adjustments that we want to make based on what we know from the first game and how they've changed uh, since that time. Tom, I want to ask you, uh, you added Michael Curry to your staff, um, you know, a few months ago. What, what has he brought to your program? What's the value his experience brings to your players and, and staff on a daily basis? Well, I think that the, the first, my first memory of seeing Michael Curry in person outside of seeing him play was I first, uh, when I first got to Marquette and I went over to a Bucks walkthrough. I was going to go to the game that night. They were playing the Wizards and I went to the walkthrough and George Carl ended the walkthrough early, but there's Michael Curry with three of the younger players out there for probably another 45 minutes to an hour, working on shooting games, uh, playing two on two, things like that. And that always stuck with me. And, and the way people that, that, that played with him or coached him, talked about him and I always followed his career. And, um, and then I got to know him when I got here, you know, I'd met him before, but I got to know him when I got here. And over a period of time, we developed uh, a relationship. He wanted to get back into coaching. And the more that I was around him, the more that um, I totally looked at it like we need what he brings on this staff. You know, not only what he brings as a coach, but who he is as a person, uh, who he is as a, a, a person of high level respect in, in the sense of how he can mentor uh, and not only help the players, but heck, he's helped the coaches. He helps me immensely. And the number one value was to bring it to the players, which I think we're, we're accomplishing, but also just having somebody with that type of experience. So being able to add Michael Curry and then being able to add Tim Dather, who I knew from my years at Indiana and who had tremendous experience in the NBA for the five the previous uh, four or five years has been really, really good for us. It's been good for everybody and it's, and it's helped immensely. Let's go to Chip and then Dash. Yeah, coach, it's, it's not real hard to, uh, uh, follow this team and see that if you could have played a little bit better in the first half, not gotten so far behind, you, you, you would have won a couple more of these games. You just had just too big a deficits. Uh, how much of a point of discussion has that been? And I mean, what do you have to act like after the opening tip that you're, that you're trailing by double digits just to get those guys in the right frame of mind? No, no, I don't think so. Not at all. I, I think it's just a, I, I don't think it's, it's that way. I think it's, you got to continue to build confidence throughout the game. And, and obviously when we play pretty well, uh, we've been able to string stops together, but we've also scored at a pretty good clip and our shooting has been good. I, I don't think you can, as a coach, you can never allow the lack of offense to influence how you're coaching them during the game, you know, because the last thing you want to do is put more pressure on them. You want to be better decision. You want to make sure they're better decision makers. You want to make sure they're understanding what we're trying to get. You have to coach them throughout the game to get better, but you don't coach them with a level of pressure that makes it even tougher. Because sometimes when that basket doesn't look very big and you start putting undue pressure on them, that basket can look like a thimble. And we don't need to have that, right? We need to be able to understand that it is a very, very long game and uh, so many different things can happen inside of it. And um, we've had a lot of different experiences right now this season that that, uh, that, that hopefully will serve us. So it, it's, it, it, the, the last thing they need is me berating them or making them feel unconfident when it comes to continuing to play. Because as a coach, you have a really good um, barometer of how long the game is. Sometimes the players, they live in the moment or worse than that, they live in the past. And you got to get them out of the past of the game, just like we wouldn't want to spend a lot of time on on past games when it comes to bringing them up during the game, but you've got to get into the moment with the player so that you can help him see that there's something inside the future of that game. And I think that's what coaching is really all about. Continue to have them find ways inside of the game when you're down. Okay. Or when you're up to continue to play, to win, not to lose, 
but to continue to understand just how long the game is and just how important every possession is. Hey, Coach, uh, of all the point guards uh, you've coached uh, over your career, what has been the unique thing about Severe and, uh, and is kind of what he brings and what he's asked to do? Well, Severe is going to be in that – he's going to be in that conversation. There, there's no doubt about it. I mean, he's young, but Severe is fantastic, and he's getting better and better. And he's improved immensely since he's been here. He's improved immensely since the season started, really since league play started. So I love what he's growing into, and – uh, I fully believe that he is going to be one of the marquee guards uh, in the country uh, moving forward. And, and I also truly believe that he's going to play at the next level in the NBA when that time comes too. And now, does there are a lot of things that have to happen between now and then? Absolutely. But that's the way it is with all players. They've got to continue to get better. But his attitude and desire to improve, uh, it, it, the way he's growing as a leader, uh, where, the way he's grown defensively, his ability to play with speed, to find people. He's an improving shooter and scorer all the time. You know, those things lead me to believe that he's just going to continue to get better and better. Just one quick follow-up, if, if, I, if I can, Coach. Uh, just update on Andrew uh, Garcia, kind of how he's doing. Uh, since it's in well, he didn't do a lot. He didn't do a lot yesterday. I'm hopeful that when we get out there today uh, that he'll be able to do more. Uh, he had what had been placed, the rods that had been placed in his nose in the surgery that he had the other day, they were removed today. Uh, so, you know, we knew that uh, he was fully cleared to play on Saturday, but we also knew that he was uncomfortable. And unfortunately, he took a couple of hits there. But uh, hopefully he will feel much better and uh, the mask will continue to protect him. And hopefully he'll start to um, really regroup to the point where he feels comfortable because we certainly miss not having him anywhere near 100 percent the other day. There's no doubt about that. Let's go to Jed and then Mike. Hey, Coach, um, I just want to follow up on um, Savir. How much have you seen him grow just as a scorer? It seems like he's scoring at a really consistent rate over these past few weeks, getting to the rim and, and finishing. How have you seen him just grow and develop as a scorer, like you said, over the course of this season and since league play started? Well, he works really hard at his shooting. And I, and I think when he steps into it and he's in a game speed mode and he's in a rhythm of his shot, it's a very good shot. And I like his pull-up, but he can really get to the basket. I think his decision-making, uh, continues to improve, which is so important. And uh, I mean, and again, now, th there's a lot of there's a lot of congestion in that lane at times because, especially when we're not shooting it as well, or when the defense doesn't feel uh, that they have to guard certain guys in our lineups right now. So that's why the cutting, the movement, him being able to to play through that, continue to get the ball back the second and third time, you know, those things are really really important. But I think what he's doing is he's getting better and better defensively. Uh, which is which is showing what kind of catalyst he can be for our team. So he's the kind of guy that he's growing. He's got tremendous confidence. I've got great confidence in him. His teammates do. He's getting better and better. And um, yeah, he makes a lot of things happen for us. Coach, uh, touched on you and LSU both being different than the first time you met. Can you share some of the things that you're seeing LSU do differently and maybe some of the keys to the game? Well, I don't know if they're, they're just improving. I mean, they're, they're scoring at a very high rate. Um, you know, they, they've, they're far more than the four leading scores. They're, they're far more than that. I mean, everybody they put in understands their role. And it may be to be in that alley underneath the basket, maybe be spaced to the three point line. It may be to be in a, in a cutting situation, but you can't forget about the other guys outside of Dave Smart, Thomas and Watford because of the way they'll offensive rebound the ball. So I think those guys are gaining confidence. Uh, I think the way Javante Smart is shooting the ball uh, is, is, is really effective. When they win, Darius Days plays extremely well. And, and uh, he can make threes. He's a very good pick and pop, catch and shoot shooter. He can get to the basket. He can rebound. Uh, Trendon continues to be able to do things uh, with the ball as well as score. He can find people. He can make passes. And they're doing a great job of getting to the foul line. And a lot of that is led by Cam Thomas, and it's led by uh, trend in Watford. So when you're playing that team, you've got to do a really, really good job of starting with your transition. You've got to understand the strengths uh, of, of those main guys. You've got to do everything you can do to keep them off the foul line. All right. And then you've got to really make them work defensively because they can really load up with their length and their strength. And the fact that days Watford and, and smart have been together for some time now, 
they can really load up and they can make it they can they can make it really hard for you in the paint. So you've got to do a great job of making sure that you continue to space the floor. Coach, our final two questions will come from Davis and then Lance. Hey, Coach, you guys are 11 and three this year at home, one of the best uh, records in the conference. Uh, just, you know, has there been an importance on protecting home court even in a pandemic year? And what's led you guys to be so comfortable? Well, there always is. You, you always want to protect the home court. And, and especially in a year like this where you don't have that extra adrenaline rush like we've had the last couple of years from a sellout crowd. You know, we just don't, we don't have that this year, right? So you've got to do even more uh, as a team to make sure that you're efficient, that your bench energy is really, really good. And, um, and, and that's what it is. And then hopefully that you build the confidence at home to go out on the road and know that when you go on the road, it's different than what it's been in years past. So it's really hard to, to judge this year based on anything else, because there's really, as you know, there's never been anything like it. And uh, so you just got to do the very best that you can. Hey, Coach, I'm looking back at the statue. Last time you guys played them, they nearly had about 19 steals. Um, is there a better plan for this game, protecting the ball and uh, just trying to limit limit those uh, turnovers and such? Yeah, I, I hope we do. Yeah, I, I don't think our plan was ever to give them 19 steals, but we're, we definitely – I don't have the stat sheet in front of me to, to look at the comparison on it, but you're right. That's too many. That's too many turnovers we had. Numerous chances to win that game and um, and even came down to the final possession with a chance to win it. So even with all the mistakes made and turnovers, we were still right there. And, and uh, um, we've got to do a better job this game, certainly, of protecting the basketball. Coach Green, thank you for your time and good luck in tomorrow's game. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.